Good evening and welcome to this edition of the Evening News for today, Saturday, March the 16th, 2024. I am Gerald Bryan. Thank you for tuning in. In the headlines, tourism collaboration now achievable as Sky High Dominicana opens office in Georgetown. New transmission line to Linden removes dependence on both sides, Jagdio. GPL strengthening internal legal infrastructure to tackle electricity theft. Government Inc.'s US 23.27 deal with Indian Exim Bank to buy aircraft for GDF. And breeding no businessman nabbed with gun ammo. Now for the news in detail. Less than a month after Sky High Dominicana commenced weekly flights here, the Santo Domingo based airline has opened its office in Georgetown, a move that could see collaboration in tourism between Guyana and the Dominican Republic. Rupa Sinrain has more in our lead story tonight. At the opening ceremony of the new David Street location in Kitty, the Dominican Republic ambassador to Guyana, Ernesto Torres Pereira, said that with Sky High serving as a bridge, the dream of developing a multi-nation tourism strategy is easily achievable. The opening of uh, a direct flight between Georgetown and Santo Domingo uh, is one of the most significant moments in the history of our bilateral relations. And uh, precisely, because of the potential to foster a more dynamic exchange uh, in trade and tourism as well and it's all in all areas of official cooperation. It is once again a time for discovery. Meanwhile, Tourism Industry and Commerce Minister Onish Walron lauded the company for heeding to the call for greater connectivity to Guyana. The fact that you started a chamber of commerce the fact that you have um, so many other kind, other interests outside of the hospitality sector, um, in business interests and connections that we've made, tells us that we are onto something real good. And that Sky High Dominicana, this is just the beginning of successes. And our team at Guyana Tourism Authority is working with you. Um, this is the Sky High Dominicana to um, build out and boost out. Uh, more more seats, more more visitors, and we have already started to see success. Of the, the airline has has been the service. We understand it's been excellent, and the fact that you're opening an office to serve the Guyanese people, to serve your customers, once again tells me that the standard of care for the, your customers is extremely high. The increasing airlifts, hundreds of new hotel rooms and new attractions coming on stream simultaneously does not happen in a vacuum, she also pointed out. It happens with government continuing to build out other aspects of the tourism sector that supports airlift. And we want to continue to listen to you, to hear what we can do to make sure that your venture as, as the, an airline is, via, is viable. We continue to the new hotel, will add immediately just in Georgetown, that Georgetown strip alone 1,000 rooms, which increases our feasibility for doing conferences. Conferences and meetings and, 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 and expos as, as part of our vision and a part of our strategy for building out of the tourism sector. There is a strategy to have 2 million visitors by 2027, experiencing Guyana for both professional and leisure activities. Sky High Aviation Services is a Dominican Republic-based airline that offers scheduled passenger and cargo services across the Caribbean, Venezuela, and the United States. It has been connecting the Caribbean for more than 12 years, committing to increased connectivity within the region and further afield. Rupa Sinarain, The Evening News. The People's Progressive Party Civic PPPC government has plans for the mining town of Linden that would include linking it with the East Bank of Demerara EBD power station to provide electricity and remove the dependence on the bauxite company of both sides for power. Here are the details. During his recent press conference, Vice President Barrage Jagdio was asked about a billboard boasting that the gas to energy project would power the whole country. While the 300 megawatt gas to energy project will almost double the Guyana Power and Light's current installed capacity, he clarified that the government will be using a range of options. Jagdio explained that they may install a transmission line from GPS control center at Eccles all the way to Linden in Region 10. It's not going to power the whole country because with the interconnected grid. 
So now we're 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 gonna build a transmission main. We gotta build a transmission main from Garden of Eden all the way to in fact maybe from Eccles would have to be upgraded from the control center all the way to Linden. Jagdio noted that this is in an effort to remove the state's dependence on bauxite company Bosai to power Linden's grid. The vice president described the current power purchasing arrangement with Bosai as an exorbitant one. Because we are making some investments in Linden now. We are putting in that the government is going to finance 12 or, or so megawatts of solar panel. But we, we are paying Bosai now a substantial sum of money every year to supply power to the community at very exorbitant rates. So we, because we have to buy the power from them, so we now need to take that power also to Linden. So we'd have power from Linden all the way to Crabwood Creek and then across the river. So we're working on an alternate arrangement for Essequibo because we don't have a cable to take the power across. As far back as 2022, GPL had indicated that the control center at Eccles is expected to be fed power from both the gas to energy and a mile of falls hydropower projects. Jao O'Brien, The Evening News. The Guyana Power and Light, GPL, is actively working to strengthen its internal legal infrastructure to tackle electricity theft, which the agency noted is contributing significantly to Guyana's energy loss. More in this Trisha Sobers report. The Ghana Power and Light GPL is currently working in collaboration with the Ministry of Housing and Water, the Central Housing and Planning Authority, and the Ghana Police Force to prosecute persons benefiting from illegal electricity connections. This includes persons plying their trade at street corners, the sidelines of main access roads, and on government reserves. On Thursday, GPL's Divisional Director for Loss Reduction, Parish Rampersad, informed the Public Utilities Commission that despite these efforts, the convictions in these cases were few and GPL is expending a significant amount of revenue to pursue prosecutions. He added that electricity loss cannot be encouraged when Guyana's electricity demand is expanding quickly. The situation still exists whereby we, as we make arrests, the time it takes to go through court and get processed, that's a problem for us. We, and now, to get the message across to the nation that, that theft is wrong, it's, it's illegal, you know, you can, you, can be, you can go to prison for it, we need to actually send, we need to get cases that are reaching this final point, someone going to prison. In an effort to increase the number of persons being convicted for this illegal act, GPL's executive and management committee member, Kesh Nanlal, said the agency will invest heavily in its internal legal capability. He explained that this will play an integral role in deterring citizens from reconnecting illegal electricity connections when removed by GPL engineers. We are going to beef up on our, um, on our legal framework, our, our internal legal strengths, so that we can, our capability, sorry, so that we can continue to pay to place emphasis on on this area of loss reduction and as Parsham alluded to earlier part um, one way of of, de of deterring this activity is to is to take take legal action and to continue to do so we are already working on on putting that infrastructure in place we have the technical infrastructure we now have to bring that and bring that more to the fore where we can um, really take on prosecution of these instances um, more seriously. In 2023, there were reports that five Z-lot squatting area residents would face the courts over charges related to electricity theft. According to GPL, on September 3, Two teenagers were severely injured from electrical shocks when they came into contact with an illegal connection at Phoenix Park Sidam squatting area West Bank Demerara. The company revealed that the teenagers were returning home from the area when one of them came into contact with a live illegally connected cable. Fortunately, they were assisted by public spirited persons who rushed them to the West Demerara Hospital where they were treated.
Trisha Silbers, Evening News. Police ranks on the east bank of Demerara have arrested a businessman who has been found in possession of a firearm and matching ammunition for which he does not have a license. The discovery was made at about 1700 hours on Friday at Jimbo Bridge Grove, East Bank Demerara. Reports are that officers were on anti-crime patrol on Grove Public Road when they observed a Toyota Tacoma vehicle driving dangerously in the vicinity of Jimbo Bridge. The patrol ranks stopped the vehicle and instructed the driver to drive to the Grove Police Station. At the time, the driver, Dylan Walker, a 30-year-old businessman of New Road, Vredenoop, West Coast, Demerara, had other occupants in the vehicle, including a 26-year-old female from Pleasance, East Coast, Demerara. A search was carried out on the vehicle, but nothing illegal was found. The police then searched the female's handbag and unearthed a black .32 Taurus pistol and a magazine containing 11 rounds of .32 ammunition. The woman told the officers that the businessman put the weapon in her bag and her claim was corroborated by Walker, who admitted that he was in possession of the firearm and ammunition when the police stopped them and that he subsequently placed them in the woman's handbag while they were being escorted to the police station. Coming up on the other side of the break, Government inks U.S. $23.27 million deal with Indian Exim Bank to buy aircraft for GDF. Please stay tuned. Welcome bonus when you sign up. Top up and cash out with MMG. Visit iBetGamesUR.com or your nearest iBet location. Poultry farmers, save money and increase your production rate by cutting the time it takes to pluck your chickens with a plucking machine from Sylvie's. We have them available in small, medium and large sizes. Replacement motors and plucking fingers are also readily available. Order yours now at sylviesonline.com or at our locations at 31 High and Hatfield Street, Georgetown or Lot 90 East Henrietta S. Welcome back. You're watching the Evening News. As part of efforts to bolster the country's defense capabilities, the Ghana government has signed a line of credit to the tune of U.S. $23.27 million with the Export-Import Bank of India for the procurement of two aircraft for the Ghana Defense Force. The agreement was signed in Georgetown on Friday by Senior Minister in the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance and the Public Service, Dr. Ashni Singh, and the Indian Exim Bank's Deputy General Manager, Line of Credit Group, Sanjay Lamba. This agreement represents the latest development in the Guyana government's ongoing efforts to ramp up the capabilities of the GDF and has its genesis in President Dr. Irfan Ali's visit to India's state-owned aerospace and defense company, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, just over a year ago in January 2023. Minister Singh has said that the government is investing heavily in strengthening the capabilities of the GDF, in particular some of its specialized wings such as the Air Corps and the Coast Guard. 
He further said that the purchase of the two aircraft was part of the biggest ever investment in the capitalization of the force thus far. Ghana is currently in the process of procuring four new helicopters for both the Army and the Ghana Police Force. Back in October 2020, the U.S. State Department had approved the sale of two Bell 412 EPI and two Bell 429 helicopters, along with the related equipment to Guyana for U.S. $256 million. This year, government has allocated some $42.2 billion of the $1.146 trillion 2024 budget towards building the technical capabilities and assets of the GDF. President Dr. Irfan Ali recently inspected the works ongoing at two major road projects in Region 4, the Ogle to Echoes four-lane highway and the Diamond to Busby Dam expansion. Let's have a look. On Thursday, President Dr. Irfan Ali visited works on the bypass road that will link the East Coast Demerara Corridor from Ogle to the East Bank Demerara Corridor at Eccles. He expressed satisfaction at the progress of the construction, noting that these works are moving ahead of schedule in time for its November completion. The 7.8-kilometer four-lane road is being built from the intersection of the Ogle Airstrip Road and the Rupert Craig Highway heading towards Hags Bosch in Eccles. In June of 2022, the government inked a $21.2 billion contract with an Indian company, Ashoka Bilcon Limited, to begin the first phase of the highly anticipated bypass road network. The president was accompanied by the Minister of Public Works, Bishop Juan Agil, and the head of the Ministry's Work Services Group, Ron Rahman, another technical officer, and the contractors during his visit. Meanwhile, on Friday, the Guyanese leader also inspected ongoing works at the Diamond to Busby Dam four-lane highway on the East Bank, where he urged contractors to take advantage of the current weather conditions. We are working on ensuring that, um, that they make use of this weather, though. They are advancing nicely. We have to work out with them and double shift system because no sense we got this weather and make it. So, how much did I put it there? 4.6. We got to come out with a 98. We got to push them, we got to work through the plant. We got to have a meeting. We got to come out and make sure they're still meeting. I think it's going to be a new plan. Taking the consideration of water. Contracts for this project were awarded in November 2023 to 11 billion dollars. The highway, executed through the Ministry of Housing and Water, will be an asphalted concrete structure. Divided into 12 lots, the project sees the construction of more than 30 reinforced concrete bridges, 4.6 kilometers of reinforced concrete highway pavement, and two roundabouts for improved traffic management. Lawanda McAllister, The Evening News. The Guyana Power and Light, GPL, will be installing an additional 70,000 advanced metering infrastructure, AMI, meters this year to replace the old terminal meters. In this report, you will hear that the power company says defective meters are contributing to its revenue loss. Trisha Sobers has more. In 2023, almost 100,000 terminal meters were replaced with AMI devices, and of that number, approximately 700 terminal devices were defective. This is according to GPL's Divisional Director for Loss Reduction, Parish Rampasad, who was at the time speaking at a Public Utilities Commission meeting with GPL to review the 2023 operating standards and performance targets of the state-owned power company on Thursday. While GPL recorded a profit loss reduction of 25.5% in 2023, Persaud revealed that the agency recovered millions in losses by replacing defective meters. On this point, he disclosed that the program ensures that citizens have reliable access to electricity and addresses GPL's loss reduction challenges. As presented earlier, we are actually visiting each one of these locations. We started last year, replacing, checking the integrity of the installations and also replacing uh, the meters. So 
and that is expected to complete mid this year, the entire um, tariff C and D customers. The AMI meter uses distribution boxes and insulated wires to minimize the instances of illegal connection that cause disruptions to the power distribution network. GPL's executive and management committee member, Kesh Nandalal, said this also allows the meter to reflect more accurate readings. Those ones um, the meter readers go around, they, they don't really come to read the meter. They, 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 they have an instrument where they, they automatically pick up, pick up the reading. They, we have about 70,000 prepaid, right? About 70,000 prepaid where we don't need to read those meters. Since the commencement of the AMI meter replacement program, some 97,480 meters were replaced at households and commercial businesses across the country. The smart meters, which were designed by a reputable company in the United States of America, also allows customers to submit their meter reads to GPL via WhatsApp and the customer web portal. Trishel Subbers, Evening News. Sharing the drastic life changes which have emerged after being diagnosed with chronic kidney disease, Dialysis patient Colvin Lutus has urged Guyanese to take control of their health by undergoing regular checkups at their nearest health facility. Rupa Sinarine has the details. In this week's edition of the Health Matters program, the Health Ministry focused on kidney care and treatment featuring a dialysis patient. Colvin Luthers shared that he has been on treatment for the past eight years. After experiencing headaches and a persistent hiccup, he chose to visit the doctor where further checks discovered that his kidneys were not functioning properly. Hearing about the diagnosis, I wasn't even... I didn't have no experience about it, didn't know where it would have led me. You know, I was oblivious to the whole extension of the, the, the thing, dialysis and everything, but then after researching, I realized that that would have been a drastic life-changing situation. To begin with, we had to walk away and leave all my work, my house, the whole life behind me. Prior to the diagnosis of chronic kidney disease, Luthers outlined that he was suffering from hypertension. However, he did not take it seriously nor take medications as prescribed by the doctor. Now he is undertaking dialysis treatment three times weekly. You're not 100%. Even after dialysis, you know, their, their incapabilities, probably a lot of people just basically walking, doing basic things for themselves. You know, there are a lot of aches and pains due to treatment, a lot of side effects, headaches, tiredness, dizziness, because you gotta use them. Sometimes a lot of people use different medications according to what caused the kidneys to yes. fail. And those things have side effects, you know what I mean? For instance, dialysis patients will come across some, so some people as lazy because we tend to sleep a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of tiredness, a lot of, you know, but that's just some of the side effects of the treatment, of the treatment and the disease itself. Advisor to the Health Ministry, Dr. Leslie Ramsamy, called on health organizations to up their game in addressing kidney diseases. I would like to call on public health agencies, ministries of health, WHO, the US CDC, and other public health entities to up their game. We need more attention on kidney diseases. It is a major public health problem, but just like HIV in the 1980s, we continue to neglect this important problem. And here is the crux of the matter. Not only does kidney diseases affect people's health, bring about premature death and disability, but it serves as a multiplier effect. It makes heart diseases worse, it makes diabetes worse, and therefore it is a public health problem that we need to focus more attention on. Guyana has made advancements in kidney replacement therapy, becoming the leading transplant country in the Caribbean. 
In 2024, it is expected that the program will be extended with a center of excellence. Dialysis is also made accessible with an annual grant issued by government to the tune of 600,000 Guyana dollars. Rupa Sinarain, The Evening News. And now for a look at the bridge reports. The Damrara Harbour Bridge will be closed to vehicular traffic on Sunday, March 17, 2024 at 23 hours 30 for a period of one and a half hours. Meanwhile, the Burberry Silver Bridge is expected to be closed at 9 hours on Sunday, March 17, 2024, also for a period of one and a half hours. Happy Eagles are in win against Barbados. This and more coming up in the Sportscast, sponsored by McCorp. Looking to bring your dream home to reality? Or simply taking on a home improvement project? Then National Hardware Limited is where you should start. Let us put that touch to your home. Choose from over 1,000 Berger Paint Original Hues for any surface. We are known for our trusted brands such as Westinghouse, Philips, Satco, Rubbermaid, Pyrex, Gibson Home and so much more. National Hardware Limited, your do it best store. Located in downtown Georgetown and industrial site Rhineville. I bet for the excitement. I bet for the thrill. I bet to win with I bet supreme. Get a $1,000 welcome bonus when you sign up. Top up and cash out with MMG. Visit iBetGamesUR.com or your nearest iBet location.